and sound. Uh, but the big thing was, was the heat that she felt, the orange glow on the wall behind her head and behind the head of the bed, and the flames were shooting from a window air conditioning unit. Uh, there was a lot of heat and blinding smoke. Tara, through the education that we, the Brooklyn Fire Department has provided yearly to our school system in, in how to take, you know, you know, how to behave in fires, Tara rolled out of bed instead of standing up. That's definitely what saved her life with the heated air and the smoke. She crawled down the steps, woke her mom and dad and her little sister, and uh, got the family out safely. The, the family dog was a concern. They initially thought that he was upstairs, but they did find him uh, downstairs and he ran out of the house with them. Once the fire was out and, and, and the overhaul was done, uh, we pulled the mattress and a box spring out, and where her head was laying was a considerable burn pattern. So this was just seconds away. Tara, due to your quick thinking and courageous actions, you and your family are still here with us all today. You certainly ought to be commended for doing all the right things during this incredibly frightening and stressful time. On behalf of the Brooklyn Fire Department, the entire Brooklyn City Administration, and the Brooklyn City Council, we honor and salute you. Ms. Tara Burns, on your life-saving actions, you truly are a hero, and everyone here this evening is grateful for you and your actions. Here's a little letter, and I'd... We have the State Fire Marshal, who's gonna present a state award to Tara, uh, Marshal Larry Flowers. Thank you, Chief. Good evening, everyone. Mayor, mayor members of council, great to be here, citizens of Brooklyn. Uh, it was a beautiful drive up. However, there was a, a wreck on 71. It really slowed me down, or I would have been here 15 minutes ago. But uh, we made it, Chief. There we made go. it. Uh, Terry, we're very proud of you as well. And I want to present you something very special. Um, you know, I've got to brag about uh, my first responders for a moment, but you're a part of that. You know you're a first responder now, right? Um, ladies and gentlemen, because of the great work of our first responders around Ohio, Ohio had 105 fire fatalities in 2013. That's 105 too many. Uh, so it's not mission accomplished, but ladies and gentlemen, that was a 27 year low. So all the great work that these folks are doing is making a difference. Uh, educating our young people uh, in the schools or every time we get an opportunity to educate young people about fire prevention, the importance of that, uh, it saves lives and it works. Uh, and it worked here. So congratulations to all of you. God bless you. Little sister, what was your name? Jessica, <laughs> glad you're here too. So on behalf of Governor John Kasich uh, and the Director of the Department of Commerce, I'd like to present you with this Smoke Detector Award. Now we call this the Smoke Dog Award. Why dog? Detector on guard. D-O-G, Detector on guard. So Tara, the Ohio Department of Commerce, the Division of State Fire March are pleased to present this award to Ohioans who have escaped dangerous fire when warned by a smoke detector. The Smoke Detector on Guard program encourages the use of smoke detectors as lifesavers. Like a guard dog, a smoke detector stands watch, signaling an alarm when life threatens. Your foresight and your training as, as, uh, came possible that night, and we congratulate you on behalf of the Chief and the State Fire Marshal. Congratulations. But I've got something more fun than that. Okay. Excuse me, Chief. You betcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. now we, we always give our, our new uh, first responders a t-shirt, smoke detector, mine working, will yours on the back. So we wanted to give that to you, Tara, as well. And, and your very own smoke dog, okay, to comfort you at night. Right. She needs one. She lost her teddy. Oh, okay. Well, that replaces teddy. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. Well done.
Thank you. You guys are welcome to go. You don't have to stick around if you want to. I don't want to leave. <laughs> was anxious to interview her, so I want them to have the chance. Um, next, I have the honor of swearing in one new firefighter, Aaron Bassett, and three new police officers, Philip Bungo, Brett Dalton, and Daniel Salas. Uh, first, I'd like to say that I know Mayor Balbert is disappointed he cannot be here tonight because as the former police officer himself, this is one of the duties as mayor he values the most. Uh, on behalf of the mayor and council, I would like to welcome our new police officers and firefighter to the city of Brooklyn, and I'd like to thank you and your families for the life of service you're swearing into tonight. The Brooklyn community really values our safety forces and supports their commitment to serve. I'll, no go, I'll now go down to the podium and uh, do the swearing in, and the families are welcome to come up at the swearing in. We'll take a couple pictures, and you guys could leave afterwards. You don't have to stick around. We'll start off with our new firefighter, Mr. Bassett. <clears throat> Just going to repeat after me. I, Aaron Bassett, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and the Charter and Laws of the City of Brooklyn, Ohio. And I will faithfully, honestly, and impartially discharge and perform. And impartially discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent on me as a firefighter and paramedic. In the City of Brooklyn, Ohio. According to the best of my ability and understanding. This I promise as I shall answer to God. Congratulations. I just need you to sign here. Do you want to get a picture of our chief and Congratulations. Chief Melky, do you want to come up here? We're going to swear in the police officers a little differently. We're going to do all three at the same time um, because they've actually already um, been sworn in. This is just a formality. So I'd like to welcome up the three new police officers, Philip, Brett, and Daniel. Raise your right hand, please. And I'm going to go, one, as far as the names, I'll go individually. I, state your name. I, Brett Dalton. I, Daniel Sellis. I, Philip Bungo. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution and laws of the State of Ohio. The Constitution and laws of the State of Ohio. And the Charter and Ordinance of the City of Brooklyn. And the Charter and Ordinance of the City of Brooklyn. And that I will faithfully, honestly, and impartially discharge, and I will faithfully, honestly, and impartially 
associate partially discharged. My duties as a police officer in the city of Brooklyn. My duties as a police officer in the city of Brooklyn. According to the best of my abilities and understanding. According to the best of my abilities and understanding. Welcome, gentlemen. Okay, one last round of applause for all of our new safety board. Okay, well, we will now move on with our regular council meeting. And before we have the public session, I'll have to give a summary of the meetings this past summer break. I'll try to stick to the main points, and uh, I'm sorry in advance this is going to be a bit lengthy. Um, first, on behalf of council, we'd like to send our condolences to the family of former Mayor John Coyne and former employee Jean Boza. Both were truly amazing men, which gave so much to the city of Brooklyn. We also would like to congratulate and wish good luck to Linda Kelber on her retirement. Linda was an employee here for many years. On June 24th, council had a meeting to approve a bid from the rec center hockey locker room renovations from White House Constructions in the amount of $151,500. This was the lowest and best bid. We accepted a grant received by the Brooklyn Fire Department from the Ohio Department of Public Safety in the amount of $2,750. The monies were used for EMS equipment. Passed a resolution adopting a tax budget for fiscal year 2015. The rate of taxation on real property for 2015 remains the same at the current level of 5.9 mills, which has been the same since 2010. Passed an ordinance authorizing the purchase and installation of an air system at the service garage in an amount of $92,193. Passed an ordinance authorizing interfund transfers and advances for 2014. Passed an ordinance authorizing the mayor to expand the agreement with Kathy Halter Greswald to provide legal services relating to the city landfill not to exceed $10,000. Passed an ordinance to amend EMS service charges. Great Lakes Billing recommended the city increase the pricing to match surrounding suburbs and to match current health insurance rates. This is no extra cost to the re residents. Passed an ordinance authorizing the purchase of two vehicles for the use of the Brooklyn Fire Department. These vehicles include a Ford Explorer and a Ford 250, both around 37,000. Passed an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter in a management consultant agreement with Clems, Nelson and Associates for scheduled on-site personnel consulting. This is at a rate of $800 per day. At the conclusion of the June 24th meeting, City Council heard a presentation on LED street lighting from Rob Martin of Marriott Energy Solutions. On July 10th, Council met and accepted a grant from Parma Hospital Healthcare Foundation for $50,000, passed an ordinance approving and authorizing the mayor to execute a community reinvestment area agreement with Trinity Land Holding at an estimated cost of $21 million. 
This agreement creates a 50% property tax exemption for 10 years. The requirements include that the owner shall build a 104,000 square foot facility at 4800 Idlewood Drive, operate 111 beds for a senior assisted and skilled care with a total investment of 20,750,000, create at least 21 full-time jobs within 20 four months of construction and 80 full-time jobs within three years for a total payroll of four million. Passed an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a job creation grant agreement with Senvio. This agreement ensures Senvio will retain 150 full-time jobs for three years and will create 12 new full-time jobs over the period of three years. The company has a total payroll of 4.5 million and they are located at 4500 Tiedemann Road. Brooklyn will award a grant for $20,000 in 2015 and $15,000 in 2016 if Senvio meets the requirements of the job retention agreement. Pass an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a job retention creation agreement with Clean Life Energies. Brooklyn agreed to issue a grant for $25,000 to Clean Energy to remain in Brooklyn for the next five years retain five full-time jobs in 2014, and create 10 new full-time jobs over the period of 36 months. Their current payroll is $617,500. At the end of this meeting, council met the new owners of the American Greening property, Stuart Litcher and Chris Samaritan. Um, you may have seen the clean energy agreement on the news or in uh, the paper, and also the deal with American Greetings, and our economic development director is gonna give an update on these things later in the meeting. On August 4th, City Council met with the school board to explore various joint service options to realize savings for Brooklyn residents <coughs> and gave the school board, superintendent, and treasurer an update on economic development projects along, moving along in the city. Additionally, council provides some suggestions to keep the stadium track open to the public. The school board is still exploring security options amongst themselves and stated they would keep council informed of their decision of if and when the track would reopen. School Board President Jen O'Banion will schedule another joint work session at the end of this year to maintain an open and working relationship with Council. At the Council meeting, a public hearing was held at the Community Development Block Grant, and Council accepted a FEMA grant to the Fire Department in the amount of $129,692 to purchase turnout gear, two automatic CPR devices, and traffic safety vests. The City's share of this grant is 5%, or $6,484. Passed an ordinance authorizing the purchase of a 2015 Mac Labrie recycle truck through Byboard National Purchasing Cooperative in the amount of $299,000 from East Texas Mac Sales and utilizing the Ohio EPA grant in the amount of $191,400. Passed an ordinance authorizing the purchase of Pierce 1500 GMP custom rescue pumper for use by the fire department from Finley Fire Equipment in the amount of $480,000. 2000 through state purchasing. City Council met in a work session to discuss various matters. Okay, I'm sorry. This is on August 25th. City Council met in a work session to discuss various matters, including Cuyahoga County C Community Development Block Grant. At the start of the council meeting, council adjourned to executive session to discuss labor union contract negotiations and matters of personnel relating to the recreation center. When the meeting resumed, council accepted a change order for the Brooklyn Recreation Center locker room in the amount of $2,693. This is adding the light lighting fixtures to the construction contract. Confirm special assessments for tax years 2014 to 2015. This allows the city to place property tax liens on parcels where the, si the city was forced to cut grass or weeds on personal property. There were 13 properties assessed for a total amount of $3,000. <coughs> We also had a few ordinances that were carried over to tonight, <clears throat> and for the sake of the public session, should ha anyone have any questions, I'm just going to give a brief summary of what we're going to see on the agenda tonight. Um, we have a request to advertise for bid to replace the city hall ramp. Um, we are going to table that today. A resolution accepting a property tax millage rate set by the county. Again, this remains the same at 5.9 mills, 3.9 inside mills, and 2 point outside millage. A resolution to apply for the county community development block grant. If awarded, the city would receive $131,276 to replace 192 lights throughout the city with LED lighting in the parks and public parking lots. The light replacement will not only improve the appearance and safety of these areas in the city, it will create an energy savings between 35 to 65%. 
Additionally, there will be a reduction in maintenance time and costs. The total estimated cost savings per year is between 8,000 to 16,000. We have an ordinance authorizing the purchase of a 2014 Ford E350 passenger bus for the use by the Senior Center in the amount of $58,758, utilizing the Parma Hospital Healthcare Grant Found Foundation grant, which is $50,000. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Jackson, Deacon, and Associates for the purpose of providing property and casualty insurance for the city for one year at a total cost of $179,701. Our city saw a premium increase of $3,000 as a result of the August 2013 appraisal where our property value went up by $720,000. An ordinance establishing a full-time Parks and Recreation Commissioner. This position is unclassified, appointed by the mayor, and confirmed by council. The salary range would be between fifty dollars and $80,000 per year. There was a part-time Parks and Recreation Commissioner by ordinance, but it hasn't been filled in years, and the mayor would like to fill this position, but on a full-time basis. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with the International Association of Firefighters Local 1145. Major, major changes include a 1.5% wage increase for 2014, with a wage reopener for 2015. Additionally, the health care contribution for the employees increased to 10% for 2014. An ordina ordinance to amend the annual appropriation. The administration is asking for an additional $290,000 for various department budgets. Our finance chair and director will elaborate on this more later in the meeting. An ordinance authorizing interfund transfers and advances. An ordina ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a municipal agency agreement with Cuyahoga County Land Re Reutilization Corporation for the demolition of Brooklyn-owned property at 7508 Memphis and possibly other city-owned properties. And lastly, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Bram Hall Engineering and Surveying at a total cost of $93,300. Bram Hall was the highest rated engineering firm that bid, and this project is to construct a new dedicated right turn lane onto I-480 at Tiedemann Road, entrance west. This uh, money will be totally based, uh, use federal funds, and the construction will be done uh, next June. Okay, that was long. <laughs> at this time, we're going to have our public session. If anyone has anything to say for the good and welfare of the city of Brooklyn, please step forward, state your name and address, including your city, and you will be recognized. Please keep your comments to five minutes or less. Okay, we will move on to reports of committees, commissions, and boards. First up, we will hear from our finance chair, Mrs. Pucci. Thank you. Good evening. Um, Mrs. Gallagher covered some of what we covered in the finance committee meeting, so I'll, I'll try not to be redundant. Um, the finance committee did meet at 6.15 this evening. Um, we did give appropriate public notice for the early meeting time to address the lengthy agenda items we have this evening. Um, the first item which we did not recommend approving, we recommended that council table is um, the authorization to advertise for bids for the ADA ramp. Um, one, we find it unacceptable that we're getting all this information late in the year when council approved this project back in March. Um, we have some concerns about bidding so late both because of weather issues with pouring concrete and also the potential for an increase in costs because most contractors have their jobs set by now and they're working hard to get what they've already committed to finished. So um, what we are going to do is when the plans are available, review them and then plan to, at the end of this year, authorizing going out for bid for an early start on the project for next spring. Um, we are going to pass by emergency measure the um, resolution 2014-6, which is for the CDBG grant. Um, just a couple other things in the fire contract, which we're also going to pass by emergency this evening, is um, there will be a reopener also to negotiate the 2015 premiums. And there was no raise in 2013. Instead, each employee will receive uh, 24 hours pay at their regular straight time hourly rate. And there was uh, eliminated the opportunity for six weeks of vacation for new hires. And the firefighters also gave up one of their holidays. 
Um, as far as the amended annual appropriations, that's going to be on first reading this evening. And basically, the general fund, if passed how it's proposed, will be increased by $290,000. Um, there will be offsets in other uh, funds by the exact same amount, $290,000, but the general fund spending would increase by $290,000. And Ordinance 2014-55, which is the interfund transfers, we're going to be taking $500,000 from the general fund to the budget stabilization fund, $150,000 from the general fund to the economic development fund, $100,000 from the general fund to the police pension fund, $100,000 from the general fund to the fire pension fund, $435,000 from the general fund to the capital improvement fund, and $126,117.93 will go first from the general fund to the safety forces construction fund. Then we take from the safety construction fund the exact same amount and put that in bond retirement. The reason for that is um, we, are, we have to collect it into our general fund. We tried to see if there was a way that we could have these funds that we collect for the new fire station coming directly into the safety forces construction fund, but we were not able to. So we need to get the money into the bond retirement fund so that we can uh, pay the, our bond payment, which is in due in December. Um, um, I thanked Mr. Enovich for his efforts in increasing the reporting that council is receiving, and I look forward to meeting with you later this week to review where we are. And that completes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have a report from the Recreation Board, Mr. Tansky. Thank you. The Brooklyn Recreation Learn to Swim Fall registration is now open, and classes begin September 15th. The cost of our residents learn to swim, $50. Swim team, $65. <coughs> Non-residents learn to swim, $65. Swim team, $90. Parma Heights Partnership learn to swim, $57.50. Swim team, $77.50. For more information on learning to swim at the John M. Coyne Recreation Center, call 216-351-5334. The next Recreation Board meeting will be held on Monday, September 15th at 7 p.m. in the Mayor's Court. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Next, we have a report from Board of Zoning Appeals, Acting Building Commissioner Dave Colsar. There will be no zoning meeting this month. No applications have been made. Thank you. Next, we have a report from School Board Liaison, Mr. Sellert. On, on June 30th, 2014, there was a special meeting held at 5.45 p.m. at the Brooklyn School Board in the Treasurer's Conference Room at 9200 Bidoff. A number of resolutions were brought up and passed varying, regarding various funds. The schools are in a fiscal year that ends June 30th, and thus this was a lot of their year-end bookkeeping accounting formalities. The Board approved permanent appropriations for fiscal year 14 and also temporary appropriations for fiscal year 15. The board also, also approved resolution 14-06-279 for the agreement with Chapman and Chapman Inc. for the assistance in managing the district's employee medical, dental, and vision benefits for the 2014-2015 school year. On July 15, 2014, the Board of Education held its regular monthly meeting at 6 p.m. A number of issues were brought up by the board members. Uh, Bonnie brought up, to, as a reminder, for people to register their children uh, early to get a good start into the school year. Matt O'Brien discussed House Bill 107, various grants, and as well as House Bill 393. The board approved an overnight trip for eighth grade students to Washington, D.C. for May 13th through 15th in the coming year in 2015. A number of other housekeeping resolutions were approved. They also, the board also approved a resolution which approves the memorandum of understanding agreement between the Brooklyn Education Association and the Brooklyn City School District where the Board of Education to establish a retirement incentive program. The memorandum of understanding is on file in the treasurer's office. There is also a resolution accepting the retirement of an employee and also the rehire of the same employee. On August 4th, as uh, Council President Gallagher mentioned, there was a joint school uh, school board city council meeting 
On August 19th, the Board of Education held its regular monthly meeting at 6 p.m. At the meeting, Cynthia Walker mentioned that the start of the schools was okay. She thanked the Brooklyn Police for the extra attention to the school areas now with the construction in full progress and that with also the extra crossing guards being stationed in several new intersections to hopefully make things go a little bit smoother. There was some discussion, of, discussion about the 2013-14 local school report card from the state. As in any type of report, there is a presentation of numbers that really needs to be studied and really looked into to get a better understanding of what is going on. The four-year graduation rate, which is students who have been in ninth grade in 2010 and graduated in 2013 was 87%. The three-year graduation, graduation rate is 88.4. While there have been improvements in a number of these categories, there was also a drop in third grade reading scores. Concurrently, there is also a change in the state measures, which while some standards would have been in prior years, the standards will not be met now. There is also some discussions as to student growth measure, measures and also new te teacher and principal evaluation systems. With all of this happening, the school administration is looking at engaging an independent third party to audit the current curriculum to see if it is lacking in area, any area and should be modified or changed. The school board at this meeting voted on a number of resolutions, including uh, contracts for the 2014-15 school year with the Cleveland Clinic Center for Autism, NovaCare Rehabilitation for Sports Medicine, Athletic Training Coverage, Behavioral Institute of Ohio, Guidestone Solutions for Children, Families and Communities to assign a licensed mental health professional to provide mental health services to refer Medicaid eligible students at no cost to, cost to the district, College Planning Center, LLC for college counseling services, and ABCT Therapy Limited for occupational and physical therapy services. On August 29th, on a lighter note, it was an opening night for the newly remodeled and updated football stadium. Brooklyn played host to Rhodes that evening. Additional home games for this year will be September 12th and 19th in this month. The cost is minimal to attend a game, so please attend and see what your tax dollars have done to improve the facilities used by our students. Two other home games in October will be October 10th, 2014, which is homecoming, and October 17th, which is senior night. If football is not your sport, take a look at the school's website and click on the tab for Hurricane Athletics to see the schedules for other sports, fall sports for boys and girls. The next regular school board meeting is scheduled to be on September 16, 2014. All the is open to the public and all are welcome. I do have one or two comments from Susie Markey. Uh, I asked her about the Brooklyn, uh, the school supply drive, and her comment quote was, the school supply, supply drive was awesome. Brooklyn City is very generous. She also had a couple other comments. International Walk to School Day is a global event that involves communities from more than 40 countries walking and biking to school on the same day. It began in 1997 as a one-day event. Walk to School Day in 20, 2014 is scheduled for October 8th. Brookridge Elementary will be participating in Walk to School Day along with activities for the week. Check out the Brooklyn City Schools website in early October for the list of activities. We celebrate in connection with the City of Brooklyn, Cuyahoga Health Department, and ODOT. Child Obesity Awareness Month is September. Uh, and then a special thank, thank you also to the local businesses once again for Brooklyn Cares Adopt a Book Bag Program. She mentions Dave Nodge with Cuyahoga County Board of Development and Disabilities, Brooklyn our, our, excuse me, Brooklyn Adult Activity Center, and in the U.S. Shui Chao Kung Fu Fall Academy West, located at 6775 Memphis. Also had email, last thing, is an email today from Amanda Hawes in regards to the high school girls uh, volleyball team. They're having two fundraisers. One is on Monday, September 22nd, uh, between 6 and 8 p.m. It's at Texas Roadhouse. Uh, get a hold of Amanda Haas for that. Or there's going to be an additional fundraiser on Wednesday, October 1st, at Buffalo Wild Wings, and that will be from 4 to 9 p.m. Once again, please contact Amanda Haas. That concludes my report.
Thank you. I have a report for Planning Commission on Thursday, July 10th at 6 p.m. Planning Commission met and passed a request from B Next Awnings and Graphics to place a new illuminated pole sign and canopy sign at 4295 Tiedemann Road for business identification of Sattermeyer Oil Company. Yeah. Passed a request from Super Sign Guys to place three wall mounted signs and one freestanding sign for new business identification of Title Max located at 10800 Brook Park Road. Passed a request from Clinton Road Partnership for a new office entry addition with interior stair replaces and existing glass vestibule with exterior stair at Arrow International located at 9900 Clinton Road. Passed a request from Brilliant Electric Sign Company to place one pole sign cabinet and three wall mounted signs for business identification of Petro Lions located at 8500 Clinton Road. And lastly, passed a request from Cleveland Bible Baptist Church to place one freestanding sign located at 4431 Tiedman Road. The meetings for August and September were canceled because there were no applications. <coughs> Okay, we will now move on to council reports. First up this evening is Mr. Van Kirk. Thank you, Mrs. Gallagher. Uh, first, I want to say congratulations to uh, Tara Burns and her family on um, her accomplishment. That is truly a, a wonderful story. We have a lot of bad news on the news, and it's good to see a, a, a touching story like that. So congratulations to her, and also, of course, to our Brooklyn firefighters. A great job, as always. I also want to say congratulations to our new firefighter and three new police officers. Uh, welcome to Brooklyn. We look forward to, to working with you. Uh, and We've had a lot of stuff going on this summer. I've had uh, numerous phone calls and emails from folks, and I just want to thank the directors for getting on top of things so quickly and taking care and resolving problems. I know it's been a busy summer for you all. I just wanted to say thank you. Um, I was not able to attend the uh, opening game uh, against Rhodes High School. I was out of town that weekend, but I was able to attend uh, the game this last uh, Friday night with my son. I attended with uh, Tanner and also with uh, a couple of parents from one of our band members. and. Um, the, the field looks fantastic. If you have a chance to go over there and go to a game, it looks it's for, top notch, first rate, it looks great. Mm -hmm. And uh, the football team won that game, although it was delayed until Saturday afternoon because of lightning. Uh, they did win the game against uh, Lincoln West, and so it was a lot of fun, and the band was outstanding. Uh, the football game was a lot of fun. The band was great. My son, he's only three months old, but he thoroughly enjoyed listening to the band. And uh, so I want to say great job, great job on that. It was a good time. If you have a chance, uh, go out there while the weather's still nice and uh, catch a game. Um, I also have had uh, quite a few phone calls and um, emails and a couple of Facebook questions about the construction on Ridge Road and on Tiedemann. And uh, I know everyone keeps saying this, but just be patient uh, with that. They are, I believe, still ahead of schedule on Ridge Road. And it, it appears that Tiedemann Road, at least for right now, the construction part of it is winding down. And uh, I just keep telling people it will be worth it once it's finished. And so we appreciate your patience. Um, they say where there is progress, there's going to be construction. And so we are making some headway. So do appreciate your patience there. And uh, school year's off to a great start, so uh, be careful as you're driving around, especially as the evenings start getting darker uh, towards uh, the early afternoon. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Mrs. Pucci? Thank you. Um, I, too, would like to thank um, the directors and department heads. We've all had a very busy summer, and I know for them this is um, their especially busy time, and I appreciate their quick response to the complaints, concerns, and questions that we get from our residents. Um, I would like to thank Superintendent Cynthia Walker and the Brooklyn School Board for inviting us to be part of the festivities when they had the ribbon cutting for the newly renovated athletic conference. It was very generous of them to ask us to participate. Um, as uh, Mr. Van Kirk said, it's beautiful. It's a source of pride for our community. It was absolutely wonderful seeing the great um, number of people who came out, especially on that first night to support our students. Um, I too attended the game um, this past Friday and there was still uh, a good number of people from the community who showed up. So I would encourage you, you know, this belongs to our whole community. Make sure you get out and see a game. It's a phenomenal improvement. And I, you could just see it in the kids, um, their whole demeanor and everything that, um, how much they appreciate the community investing in them. I too would like to welcome and congratulate our newest members of the safety forces. I wish them long, healthy, and safe careers in our community. Congratulations also to Tara Burns on her accommodation for her life-saving actions. We are all proud of her actions that resulted in uh, her being able to save her family. Thank you also to our firefighters. Our firefighters um, not only, um, you know, 
obviously put out the fire, but they work very hard in establishing a rapport with our students and making sure that when they go back into the schools year after year that they are reinforcing what the st students need to know if they're ever faced with a life-threatening situation. Kids will do remember. Um, regarding um, one of the pieces of legislation on our agenda this evening for the CDBG grant, um, I, I am going to support and uh, vote in favor of this for the lighting because I don't want to miss an opportunity for this grant. But I do object to the fact that after we were forced to return a grant for the splash pad last year, that there was, there was a clear understanding that we would apply for a CDBG grant again this year, and this idea was not even pursued. Um, if the administration wanted to go in a different direction, I believe they had an obligation to come to council and have a conversation with us much sooner um, than what actually happened, not at the last minute. Our engineer was not even asked to update the plans, so basically this option was sabotaged from the beginning. Last year we announced to our residents that we would be building a splash pad, and then we had to renege on that. This has been on the back burner for a long time because of other money issues. A splash pad would not only be a plus for our residents with young children, but it would also be an additional source of revenue for the rec center. And I know that there's other issues that do have to be addressed over at the rec center, but my point is that if, if we're gonna veer from something we had an understanding on, that council be a part of the conversation from the beginning and not at the last minute. Um, last year, I mentioned an idea to the mayor relating to University Hospital's integration with Parma Hospital. There had been some pushback in the communities, and I knew that a merger was inevitable because of changes in Medicare and the implementation of the Affordable Care Act. Parma Hospital was no longer viable as an independent hospital. I was aware that University Hospitals had partnered with other communities for wellness initiatives, and I knew that the Cleveland Clinic had done the same. I mentioned my idea of asking university hospitals for a grant to each city to be used for wellness. The mayor liked the idea and said he would share it. I also contacted Dean DePiro, who informed me that those in control were considering some form of monetary grant or donation to the founding communities, and he liked my idea of tying it to wellness. Once the wheels were in motion, I asked the mayor to form a committee that included residents to look at how best to use these dollars. I asked for this on more than one occasion. Using the money for the senior van is the easy way out, but it also results in a missed opportunity for our residents. Yeah. There are many ways we could use these funds that would have a positive impact on wellness in Brooklyn. Our partner communities in the founding of Parma Hospital are using their funds in various ways, but they will all result in promoting wellness, unlike our proposed project, which is paying for the senior van. Parma is going to create a handicapped accessible area in one of their parks and purchase exercise equipment for their Veterans Memorial Park. Parma Heights is going to repurpose a former ice rink to create and provide equipment for an all-purpose room where daily classes such as Pilates, yoga, and jazzercise can be taught to members of the community. North Royalton is using those funds to match for their local match to a million dollar Clean Ohio grant which will enable North Royalton to connect with Brexville, Broadview Heights, and the Metro Parks for an all-purpose walking bike trail. We already have a plan for a trail alignment and neighborhood connector. We could use our funds to jumpstart this trail plan. Seven Hills is going to create a handicapped accessible playground next to the City Recreation Center and to improve transportation for seniors who want to come to their rec center for wellness visits. Brooklyn Heights is going to purchase exercise equipment for children and adults to be used in one of their city parks. I'm not against getting a senior van. In fact, I'm the person who secured the funding for the current van we have now. I am against using these wellness dollars to pay for it. We can either apply for funding through another source, a source which incidentally has funded senior vans in other communities, or we can pay for the van on our own. We have a number of capital improvement projects that we approved this year that will not be completed until next year. We have the money to pay for it if that's the route we choose. I thought it was ironic that in their press release, University Hospital stated that, quote, the mayors worked with their constituents to determine the wellness program that best fit their needs. And I can tell you that did not happen in Brooklyn. 
It is sad that more do not recognize this opportunity. Other communities have successful wellness initiatives that not only improves the wellness of residents, it also engages residents, brings them together, and strengthens a sense of community, which were on the list of what we're lacking in our city when we did our focus groups. And that completes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Um, Mrs. Belbeer. Thank you. Um, it's great to be back. I hope everyone had a great summer. You can feel that falls in the air and um, things are back to normal here. I too attended the first football game at the stadium and the team looked great. The band sounded fabulous and the stands were alive with excited fans. If you get a chance, make sure you get out and check out the new turf. And of course, hear that fabulous marching band and support the football team. I kind of am a little bit prejudiced because I live right behind the stadium and I hear all, well, towards the end of the summer, the band practicing. It gets better and better and better. It's just really wonderful. Um, on another note, the Brooklyn Democratic Club is having an Oktoberfest, October 20th. We're having it right over here at the Senior Center. Uh, it's, it's open to all citizen, citizens, and it's a fundraiser. There's going to be food, there's going to be raffles, there's going to be prizes, there's going to be entertainment, and the food's going to be catered by Sokolowski's, and it better be good. And uh, once again, that's October 20th at 6 o'clock, so get your tickets from the Senior Center. Chico will be selling them, and I need I say more. Everyone should know who Chico is, so uh, be sure and uh, get your ticket. It should be a good time for all. I, too, would like to welcome all our new fire, firemen and policemen. God's blessings upon them as they serve our city. Congratulations to them. I would like to specifically congratulate Officer Sellis, who was just sworn in. I knew his mom for years. She worked at the after school care at St. Thomas More and happened to watch both of my, my, my children. Officer Sellers would come down you know, occasionally to visit her. He was always so respectful and kind, and I am so proud that he is on our team. Uh, I'm also looking forward to having a wonderful year here, and um, things are starting, great things are, are being planned for our city. So now it's, uh, um, you know, just to keep it, continue to keep it a great place to live. I'd also like to, com um, to commend that lovely little girl, Tara Burns. What a sweetheart, you know, on her valiant actions. You know, she, tru she truly is a hero. Um, I, I, I'm just going to give my opinion on the wellness grant. Um, I, I personally am for the, for the senior van. When it comes to exercise and it comes to wellness, people have their own set way of doing things. Um, giving people a pedometer and starting a, 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 a group, a, a walking group or a running group is very personal. Um, I think the money would be well spent towards the van. The van is rickety. Uh, it's worse than my minivan. It, it's got to go. You know, the lift is, oh, sorry, Wally. <laughs> but uh, uh, Wally's my mechanic. But anyways. Um, let me just say, I, I think it would be a great thing to have for the senior. You, you'd get more for your bang with that than you would uh, uh, exercise. You've got, you know, people that exercise, they go to Gold's. They go to, um, you know, they go to Gold's gym. They go to the YMCA and, you know, uh, they have their own set of rules. This, this, I think, would be a good thing. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Mr. Tansky. Good evening. I want to welcome everyone back. Hopefully everyone had an enjoyable summer. I want to say hats off to Tara Burns for your bravery. You are definitely a hero. <coughs> Congratulations to our newly sworn in police officers and firefighter. I would like to say thank you to school superintendent Cynthia Walker for the invitation to the newly renovated Brooklyn <coughs> High School Stadium. The field looks great. <coughs> Sustainability meeting was held on August 14th. A presentation was given by Eric Wires of Johnson Controls on the idea of adding a combined heat and power generator for the recreation center. This is an opportunity to reduce energy costs and potentially provide backup power in case of an emergency for the rec center by installing and operating a combined heat and power generation unit. 
A simple explanation is that a clean natural gas burning electric generator would be installed near the center. It would generate electricity to run the building or part of it, and then the heat generated by the engine would be used to preheat the water in the swimming pool, thereby reducing the energy needed to run the boiler that is, <clears throat> that is in use now. Although every case is different, the cost to purchase and install a system like this is approximately 800000 Obviously, depends on sizing. Under House Bill 300 in Ohio, the city can borrow money to purchase and install the unit and pay for it with guaranteed savings. <coughs> Payback for these units can be 8 to 10 years, depending on electricity and gas cost. The useful life of this unit is well beyond that, so once the unit is paid for, the cost savings can be used for other things, or it could be financed over a longer period and the additional savings above the debt payment for purchase could be used for other things, can be used for other things. Additional information. The units are quiet and have sound deadening enclosures. Service agreements make sure the equipment is maintained properly. It is efficient, environmentally friendly. We are looking into possible grants for this unit. Also discussed was a five-year plan on heating and cooling units that po would possibly be in need for replacement in the future. Ordinance 2014-52, establishing the full-time position of Parks and Recreation Commissioner and repealing the position of Recreation Commissioner. I believe this ordinance will more, more, than, likely, <clears throat> more than likely cost more <clears throat> the city rather than hiring an assistant and with the same results. Also, do we have a projected plan as to what the commissioner is going to be accountable for and also a projected future plan of action. I emphasize, no matter who manages the rec center, we need major monies allocated to this building to remodel and clean it up. Or whoever's in charge will be in the same situation we are in now. As far as managing it, I believe Maria McGinty has 20 plus years of experience to get the job done. I have two issues that need to be addressed before any ordinance of this sort is passed. Number one, I would like to see the future plan in place and how the city is going to approach the rec center with a new view of management. Two, and with the same plan in place, have a meeting with Marie McGinty and our staff to recognize and restore the confidence to our residents in managing and making the rec center, rec center a dynamic and clean place to come and enjoy it. Ordinance 2014-53. Authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with the International Association of Fighters, Firefighters Local 1145. To give you an update how we are at this point of approving this ordinance, the firefighters contract was sent to fact finding <coughs> in which the report was not in favor of the city, costing the city additional attorney fees. The city officials did not like the decision which was given by the fact finder and moved it to arbitration costing the city even more tax dollars on attorney fees and lost this decision too. I myself accepted the fact finder's report, which would have saved the city attorney fees, opposed it to arbitration, which would have saved the city even more attorney fees. I also opposed this whole process to subcontract out any of the negotiations to any law firm, which in fact in all labor agreements, other than hospitalization plans, which was already being agreed upon, had any language that saved the city major tax dollars. But one thing the attorneys came up with was a bill just under $100,000. I strongly advise all city officials, we are headed for more wasted time and attorney fees, and the results will be, in the, will be the same in the end. Mr. Clausen, I believe we are heading into the reopener in the future. And I believe our staff is going to head up these negotiations, including yourself. Am I correct? I believe this that's time? the route the mayor wants to go, yes. Good. That concludes my report. Thank you, Kevin. Mr. Selhurst. Thank you, Ms. Gallagher. Congratulations to Tara Burns. Uh, also, a warm welcome to our new firefighter and our new police officers. It's nice to see additional safety forces within the city. Hopefully, it just makes everybody feel a little bit more comfortable at, at home and at when they're enjoying business, you know, within the city. Um, hopefully everyone had an enjoyable summer. 
Construction is moving along on Ridge Road as painful as it may be at times, uh, as well as the work on the ramps on Tiedemann and 480. Work has also begun on Outlook with the curbs and aprons being addressed now. Bentwood and Rodone west of Bidoff and Bentwood east of Bidoff should begin within a few weeks. Plan to meet with Mr. Verber and Mr. Courtney to look at the streets to be done for next year so we can go out to bid on a timely basis. Now would also be the time to see if there are any public works grants that are available that may be used for any, other, any of uh, other streets that are in disrepair, uh, one of them being Rodone, the major section of it. There will be a public works meeting somewhere in the next few weeks. Notice will be given. The topics to be covered will be the streets for next year and uh, also looking into the feasibility of a V-hook multi-purpose truck for the service department for next year. In regards to the Marine Corps uh, combat fitness test I mentioned at the last council meeting in June, I have been working on it. It still may happen or it may not. Uh, as I mentioned before, I had the opportunity to meet with two recruiters from the Marine Corps who gave a talk at one of the campus lights events held by Nick Maroulis. Their discussion was about having a proper character and attitude. After the event, a number of younger people had general comments and conversations with the two recruiters. I know that the current class, there is already one student that who will be going into the Marine Corps. What the, recru what the recruiters have offered to do is to run a combat fitness test. This would be at no cost to the city. In June, there were a number of things that needed to be worked out yet regarding space, liability, and insurance and waivers. Issues about space and waivers have been addressed. Liability insurance is still something that needs to be resolved for this to happen. Should this all fall into place, it would not happen until next spring. On June 24th, City Council did attend a presentation by Rob Martin from Myriad Energy Solutions LLC about switching current lighting on Ridge Road from high pressure sodium or metal, metal halite to LED lighting. This based on all the facts at that time was a money saver for the city and was one of the options for uh, the community block development grant. Some issues came up after the meeting with First Energy, which co has caused this project for now to be sidelined. I will continue to keep working on this project. Thank you to Fran, our economic development director, for working on the alternative LED lighting project for the exterior of various city facilities, such as the Recreation Center, Senior Center, City Hall, parking by the Recreation Center, and behind City Hall, especially by the police station, Marquardt Park, and various buildings within Memo Brooklyn Memorial Park. Should we get the grant, the cost savings and energy cost and maintenance will be a savings to the city immediately, especially since it's not the city's own money, but grant money. I have one or two comments in regards to Ordinance 2014-52 regarding the Recreation Commissioner spot. At this point in time, I am not in favor of that spot. The Recreation Center needs an in-depth look at what is happening there now, what equipment needs to be replaced, and very simply, what needs to be done just to get it back up to respectability. One of the ideas for the Community Development Block Grant was a splash pad. I do like that idea, but what else do we need to build with it? A slide, more recreation type equipment that you now see at Millburg Heights, Fairview Park, other towns. We need to replace the roof, there's $800,000. Just this past weekend, as you heard, the center was closed due to breakdowns and also by a possible lightning strike. We also now have Gold's Gym and we'll have LA Fitness opening in the near future that will cause additional competition. The population base for the Recreation Center now has more options. There also be talk, there's also been talk of a wellness program uh, with possible uh, community block development grant money. If we're going to spend money on the rec center, let's spend it and do it right to realization that is not a money maker, but with maybe somewhat that at least we can break even. Our job as a city is to provide the best possible services to the residents of the city while managing the funds of the city to provide these services in a prudent manner. That concludes my report. Thank you, Andy. Mr. DeMarco. I'd like to uh, welcome everybody back as well from summer break. It was a long, busy summer for myself. Um, I, I am the chairman of the uh, St. Rocco Labor Day Festival, which is not too far from here. And so I'd like to thank uh, the many residents that stopped down and enjoyed our great food and also members of the administration. It was by far our most successful festival as it was our 100th anniversary of the church. 
Uh, I'd also like to welcome our new employees to our safety forces for both the police and the fire. Um, my comments, uh, one other item, I'm sorry, uh, I'd like to congratulate Linda Kelber on her retirement and wish her well. Uh, my comments tonight center uh, on the passing of a great leader that the city of Brooklyn was lucky enough to have as its mayor for over 50 years. John M. Coyne was truly a unique and great man. Many of the ideas and a lot of the hard work that he put in to help build Brooklyn from a rural community to the thriving suburb it is today was a direct result of his uncanny knack for getting people to see his vision. Today we are all beneficiaries of this legacy. I came to know the Coyne family through his grandchildren when we used to take swimming lessons together at the old Brooklyn pool. I learned the importance of their uh, Irish heritage and still treasure today the relationship I have with the entire Coyne family. And I just wanted to entertain you with a story or two, at least I think they're entertaining. Uh, first, uh, the mayor allowed me to interview him several times for a paper I did on tax abatement uh, and the benefits uh, that municipalities, when municipalities offer them when I was conducting my master's program, so I wanted to thank him for that. Uh, I also had the pleasure of serving in the service department um, in summers and when I came home from uh, break uh, from college. And un unfortunately, one summer, uh, after lunch break, I got stuck on the packer. Usually they had one summer help and one full time or well. There was some confusion. We got two summer summer guys on the back of this truck and this was, I don't know, it was over 90 that day for sure and back then we were not allowed to wear shorts. So we're going through the route and I was getting a little frustrated and the person I had with me wasn't uh, the best worker. And I got in the habit of throwing a couple garbage cans kind of over the top of the truck trying to land them on the side uh, just to, I guess, entertain myself and maybe to take some frustration out. Well. Ten minutes later, old police interceptor pulled up and uh, Mayor Coyne got out and he let me know that uh, that wasn't acceptable in the city of Brooklyn. And it's that attention to detail um, and that leadership uh, that really separates him from a lot of elected officials. Um, so with that being said, um, one quote that was uttered periodically by the mayor that I think is very apropos and applicable to a lot of what I've said during my time on council is if your dreams don't frighten you, you haven't dreamed big enough. And I, I'd uh, really be interested to uh, get his comments on kind of where our city is at today and, and what our future is. Uh, we certainly miss his leadership. I miss his leadership. With all this being said, uh, I'm asking uh, fellow members of council and the mayor to support <coughs> commemorating his legacy to our city with the erection of a statue in his honor. Uh, I will. Uh, I will chair a committee to research the cost, location, et cetera, of such a statue and will provide the appropriate information to the mayor and council for their consideration in a timely manner. And that's all I have. Thank you, Shirley. Thanks, Tony. M Mrs. Gallagher, I apologize, but I forgot something. Do you, could I say it now or do you want me go to go ahead. after you? No, go ahead. Okay, thank you. And I'm sorry, I had it on another sheet. Um, and unfortunately, it's going to be a little redundant um, after what Mr. DeMarco said. But um, as Mrs. Gallagher mentioned, we lost two longtime residents over the summer. Um, Jean Boza passed away July 3rd at age 59. He was a lifelong resident and a retiree of our service department. He was a gifted student, writer, and a musician. After his freshman year at John Carroll, Jean suffered a traumatic brain injury while working for the city as a summer employee at the service garage. It was a tragic accident that altered his life forever. He was unable to return to college, unable to drive, unable to do many things that we take for granted. Mayor Coyne promised his mother that he would always have a job and kept his word, and Jean was able to retire on a disability after many years. I know that there were times when employees at the service garage became frustrated with him. There are some funny stories about them having to go out and find him. You see, because he couldn't drive, he had to be dropped off and picked up. So they would drop him off, he was supposed to be weed whacking an area, and then sometimes when they went back to pick him up, he wasn't there and they'd have to look for him. After Jean retired, he had a daily routine of attending daily mass at St. Thomas More, going for coffee, stopping at City Hall, and making his way over to the senior center. Even though his family wanted him to move so he would be closer to them, Gene would not leave Brooklyn. He loved being in Brooklyn. He had his routine, people who cared about him, and for the most part, he could walk to where he needed to go. It was heartwarming to see his classmates from St. Ignatius and John Carroll at his funeral to pay their respects to their friend whose life, because of a tragic accident, turned out so different from theirs. As one of his friends wrote in a song, 
He walked a long, rough road, but he never lost the faith. I knew Gene most of my life, and it was an honor to know him. I think one of the lessons he taught me was that everyone has gifts to share. Sometimes it's not so obvious. We need to give those who are different from us a chance to show us what their gifts are. And of course, the other resident we lost was Mayor Coyne. Um, through vision, planning, and foresight, he developed Brooklyn into a thriving city that provided its residents with services that were envied by other communities. Every resident should be grateful for his dedication and leadership to our community. Mayor Coyne believed that we all have an obligation to leave the world having made a positive impact for the next generation, and that he did. We are still benefiting, benefiting today from Mayor Coyne's vision and governance. There were many stories shared from his amazing experiences, his devotion to his family, the fact that he was a doer, not a talker, a player, not a spectator, his reputation for being frugal, and also for knowing where every dime of taxpayer money was spent. His belief that one person can make a difference, he always respected and supported veterans and helped get them jobs. Sure, he could be tough, especially if you worked for him, which Mr. DeMarco found out. I got to learn firsthand, though, that that was because he sincerely believed deep in his heart that the residents of the city of Brooklyn deserved the best. He was not satisfied with the status quo. He was always striving to improve, to move the city forward, whether it was bringing a new business to the city to grow our tax base or improving services to our residents. I will always be grateful to him for his support and what I learned from his example. He knew four generations of my family. I think Congressman Lewis Stokes summed it up best when he said that, quote, Mayor Coyne set the bar for excellence in public service, that he leaves a legacy of love and caring with dignity and honesty for the people who elected him to public office. It is a legacy unmatched anywhere in America and a challenge to all who follow. Thanks, and thanks for your indulgence. I think my colleague said um, most of the report of thank yous and everything, so um, I'm not going to repeat all of that, but I'd like to thank Councilman Sellerts for researching and bringing the idea of the LED lighting to our city. I know that Mr. Tansky a couple of years ago looked into energy savings <laughs> options, but back then our budget was much tighter than today. Um, regarding the creation of the full-time building commissioner, um, I personally believe there needs to be dramatic changes to the rec center facility and programming. But I don't believe that adding additional personnel should be our first step right now. I'm willing to work with my colleagues to make sure this matter is decided in the best way possible for our residents. And I'm confident that these discussions will lead to improvements in the recreation center in one form or the other. Um, I had a couple of residents mention that they were having trouble seeing the TV um, on Time Warner Cable, the public channel. Um, so Mary Jo here was kind enough to call our Time Order liaison, and uh, he informed her that a letter was sent out to customers in April of this year explaining the new digital, digital formatting taking place. If a customer does not have cable-ready QAM tuner or new digital TV, they will need to get a digital adapter box from Time Warner. The box is free until October 1, 2015. After that, it will cost $1.50 per month. Um, and the channels, the public channels will, will not be dropped, uh, but they will now be found on channel 9620 for the government and 9622 for education. Customers can go to the nearest Time Warner office to pick up a cable box in person in Ohio City at 2027 West 25th Street across from the West Side Market. And their hours are Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., Saturday 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and they're closed on Sundays. Uh, customer service number is 1-877-772-2253. And Mary Jo is going to post this notice in the City Hall as well as over in the Senior Center. And if you know someone that's having trouble and has Time Warner Cable, if you can let them know and you see this. Um, also... Reminders, the Laurel Garden Club will meet tomorrow at 7 p.m. in the Fire Station Community Room at 8400 Memphis Road. All are welcome to attend. Um, members will participate in the Summer Harvest Show and Tell. Today is International Literacy Day, and so for that I'd like to remind everybody that on Saturday, October 4th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., 
uh, Sunday, October 5th from 1 to 3, the Friends of the Brooklyn Library will hold a book and movie sale. It begins with a member preview from 9 to 10 a.m. on Saturday where people can join um, the Friends of Brooklyn Library and it includes a bag sale of $3 for a bag of books on Sunday. The money raised will be used to buy equipment and supplies for the library. And lastly, some of our local businesses, including the Cuyahoga County Board of Developmental Disabilities, Huntington Bank, Sherman Williams, and Fifth Third Bank will be honored this Thursday at the Chamber of Com Commerce luncheon. They were all named as one of Northeast Ohio's top workplaces in 2014. So congratulations. Uh, we'll now move on to director's report, and first up is Recreation Manager Maria McGinty. Good evening, Councilman Gallagher. I wanted to thank Marie Trino for her many years of hard work and service as our clerical secretary. As of August 28th, that was her last day at the Recreation Department. I hope she enjoys her retirement. I wanted to welcome two new full-time maintenance employees to our staff, Chris Hovan and Ryan Tolowitzki. Um, they started last week. On September 2nd, we started offering a Silver Sneakers Classic Land class. This class will be held on Tuesday mornings at 9.15 a.m. We also recently added a Silver Sneakers Yoga class on Fridays to be added onto the Silver Sneakers Yoga that were already offered on Monday and Wednesdays, so now Fridays are available also at 9.30 a.m. If you'd like to enjoy water, we also enjoy have Silver Sneakers Splash classes that are still held on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10.30 a.m. We also offer Arthritis Foundation Aquatics Program. Shallow water classes are held on Tuesday and Thursdays at 11.45 a.m. and deep water classes on Monday and Wednesdays at 11.15 a.m. During the evening, if you'd like to relieve some stress, come and join our deep water fitness class. This class creates less stress on your joints and provides more hydrostatic pressure, which increases metabolism and circulation. Abdominals and core strength are developed throughout the class. This class is held on Tuesday evenings at 6.15 p.m. Back again with a new time and a new teacher, basic flow yoga will be offered Tuesday and Thursday evenings starting September 16th at 7 p.m. For more information regarding any of these classes, feel free to contact the Recreation Center at 216 351-5334, or email me at mmcginty at brooklynohio.gov, or you may stop in and pick up a flyer or go to the city website and go under the Recreation Department. That is www.brooklynohio.gov. That concludes my report. Thank you, Maria. Next up, we'll hear from our Finance Director, Mr. Anovich. Thank you, Council President Gallagher. Uh, the mayor asked that I share with council and the residents uh, an update on our financial position. This is a similar report that I give him on a periodic basis, so if you're not with your indulgence, I'll kind of read most of it and um, give you a summary of where the city stands financially mid-year. Our revenues for all of our funds so far this year are at $13,738,000. This is about 4% ahead of the projected $12,733,000 that we set in our budget originally. We set that amount by taking 50% of the total annual projected revenue that we were expecting for all funds of about $25,467,000, and it is about $1,009,000 or about 7.93% greater than the same period in 2013. For the general fund, our general fund revenues at mid-year were $9,450,000. This is $564,000 ahead of the projected $8,885,000 that we set in our budget in the beginning of the year. And as a percentage of the total general fund revenue, it is $557,000 or 6.26% greater than the same period of last year. Material positive, I'm sorry, material positive variances in the year over year general fund revenue include a $290,881 or a 294% increase in fees to the building department for building permits and a 
dollar or 88% increase in mayor court fines, a result of the increase in ticket writing activity by the police department. Real property and homestead exemption taxes were up $27,900. It's about 9.3%. State taxes earmarked for the general fund were up 69,109,000. This is year over year. The municipal income tax revenue allocated to the general fund at mid-year was $7,422,000. That's $92,000 or 1.25% greater than the same period of 2013. Of that total, withholding was actually down less than a half a percent at $26,871. Local business income tax increased by $108,365. That's a 16.28% increase and is an indication of the recovering local economy. Individual income tax payments also increased 2.3% at $10,921. Also of interest, the admission tax for movie attendance increased by $14,900. That's almost double of what it was last year. And the city received $97,754 in inheritance tax. Now the inheritance tax has gone away. However, a state settled before 2012 still fund the, uh, we still receive funding from them through the state. And revenue from the ambulance service collections was down at slightly to, uh, by 35,000, but as you heard, there would be adjustment in fees to bring that up. Now these are all mid-year uh, mid numbers that are not final, and there could be some timing dif differences that contribute to the variance. So that's the revenue side. All the other funds, that was the revenue side of the general fund. All the other, other funds, um, increased by about $452,000 or 12%. Revenue for the capital improvement fund increased by $251,943. That's about 30%. Revenue for the termination leave fund decreased by $41,800. And revenue for the re retrospective claims fund decreased by $87,897. Just briefly, termination leave fund is a fund that we've set up to fund the payouts that we give our departing employees for retirement. They accumulate a crew vacation comp time that they cash out so we don't put a burden on our general fund uh, wages and benefits. And the retrospective claims fund funds our Bureau of Workmen's comp premiums, which are about $350,000 a year. Now these are all, these allocations are now all as a result of council Ordinance 2014-9, which was the real reallocation of the proceeds of the municipal income tax. There were no material changes to the remaining funds at mid-year in 2014. Now the other side of the income statement is the expenditures. The expenditures for all funds at mid-year were $10,780,503. That is about $1,043,000 below the projection of $12,724,000 and about $698,000 or 7% greater than the same period in 2013. Of the general fund expenditures, at mid-year they were $7,291,285 or 67% of our total expenditures for all funds and were $2,159,000 less than our general fund revenues. This represents an operating margin, the difference between what we take in and what we pay, of about 22.85%. Wages and benefits were 5.4 million, or 74% of the total general fund expenditures through mid-year, and were $258,000 below the target of 5.7 million. Other expenditures consisting of transfers and operating expenses were $1,874,000. This was $97,000 below our target of $1,972,000. Of the total wages and benefits, 34% was for the police department, <clears throat> excuse me, 25% was the fire department, 18% was for the service department, 9% was the recreation department, 3% was the law department, including the mayor's court, 3% was the finance department, including civil service, and 3% was for the mayor's office, including public lands and buildings, 2% was the building and engineering department, and 2% was the senior center, and 1% was city council. 
of the other expenditures, we break our appropriations into wages and benefits and other expenditures, uh, through mid-year $477,000 was public lands and buildings, of which $407,000 was utility and solid waste disposal expenses. We had $183,000 in general operating expenses. Those include our insurance, other operating expenses. The recreation department was $166,000. The police was $147,000. The service garage was $130,000. The uh, fire department was 105,000. The law department was 62,000, and that includes the mayor's court. <clears throat> and a balance of 84,000 was divided between the mayor's, the building, engineering, senior center, data systems, mayor, finance, and civil service. Relative to budget, total general expenditures were 356,000, or 4.88 percent, below the target for mid-year, of 7,647,000. Material positive differences in the police material positive differences in the police department were the result of timing different timing issues for the new patrolman, which we saw tonight. The material negative differences in the service garage related to the unusual, unusually harsh winter, with um, thirty-two thousand dollars in wages and benefits below, uh, above what we projected, and twenty thousand dollars in other expenses. Wages and benefits were $5,416,000 through mid-year, $258,000 less than target of five million six. A major positive variance, the major positive variance of $102,000 in the police department helped offset a negative variance of $32,000 in the service garage. The police hiring is proceeding as planned, but not at the rate as was originally projected. The service garage overtime is a result of the, the harsh winter. All that being said, as of today, our general fund balance is $11,281,871. Year to date, our revenues to the general fund are $13,945,041. And our year to date expenditures are $10,178,752.95. Our present cash position is $26,397,709.12. That concludes my report. Thank you, Dan. Next, we'll hear from our service director, John Verba. Thank you, Mrs. Gallagher. Uh, just some road construction update for everyone. Um, there's still work to be completed on the Tiedemann off-ramp off project. Uh, this week, they are working on the south side median. Next week, uh, they are scheduled to uh, finish the sidewalks and curb ramps. Other work that still needs to be completed are guardrail, striping, seating, overhead signs, and ground-mounted signs as well. They're looking at mid to late October for completion. In regards to the Ridge Road project, the pavement removal has begun on the west side of Ridge near Ira. It should last a week. AT&T is completing their relocation work. Uh, once they are done with their work, um, the last 60 feet of new storm sewer installation uh, will take place across Northcliff. Um, this will be done on off hours to not affect traffic. The stabilization contractor is scheduled to be there on September 22nd. Um, their work will last anywhere from one to two days. Once they are completed, um, the contractor will then set up uh, for the concrete, uh, which could take anywhere from eight to 17 days. And they hope to have this section completed by mid-October. Um, bid off should be open later this week. Um, the repair and resurfacing of the side streets um, is moving along on schedule. They should be completed with Outlook Drive by October 8th. And then Bentwood and Radon South will be started on October 1st and with a completion date of October 31st. That completes my report. Thank you, John. Next we'll hear from our police chief, Scott Milkey. Um, aside from the three new officers, we do have another officer. He's currently in Columbus being trained, uh, going through his basic training. Uh, he is a replacement for Patrolman John Albany, who retired uh, back in June after 25 years. Uh, he's taking up a new career called being a grandpa. <laughs> um, I want to give you a little update on our regional dispatch. Uh, we are uh, intending to uh, contract out our dispatching services uh, to the city of Parma. Um, this is uh, 
mainly done to improve the service services uh, to our residents, uh, particularly the emergency medical dispatching, allowing more than uh, one dispatcher to stay on the phone with a resident through any kind of medical emergency, giving her his or her undivided attention just to the uh, uh, medical uh, emergency itself while paramedics, fire, and police are on their way. Um, there should be a small savings to the city, uh, hopefully greater savings down the line as the years pass, and we don't have to replace the equipment that we would have to uh, normally replace. Um, our dispatchers, just to, to uh, let the residents know, are, are uh, going to have first opportunity to go over to Parma uh, once they get, they're given uh, applications and uh, given the testing procedures. Um, Parma will uh, look at hiring them. So uh, somebody will know where Brooklyn is and where you live once once you're over there. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Mrs. Gallagher, may I ask the chief a question yes. about that? Um, I just want to make sure you're aware that Parma already advertised for their test. Uh, if there's a correction that will be coming out. Okay. That's not right. Okay. Thank <laughs> I'm aware of it, but it needs to be corrected. Okay. Thank by Parma. You. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from our acting building commissioner, Dave Colsar. Thank you. I would like to thank everyone for their support during this transitional period for the building department. And while uh, construction throughout the city is at its at its height, uh, Commissioner Ed Fitzgerald resigned in the middle of July, and we moved our office uh, a week later to the old tax department. Uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Fitzgerald for his service. Mr. Colsar, you need to pull the microphone Mike down. Trump. Sorry. Should I start over? <laughs> Uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Fitzgerald for his service to Brooklyn and his recommendation for my hire. I look forward to continuing working with all of you. Thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from our Economic Development Director, Fran McLarino. Thank you, Council President Gallagher. I wanted to give you an update on the property at 9538 Idlewood. This is a residential property that apparently had been on the books for about a year and a half and we had lots of complaints about it. So I just wanted to kind of give you an update as to where we are with that property. On March 5th, 2014, the Brooklyn Land Reutilization Program, we did take title to this vacant, foreclosed nuisance property. On April 30th, 2014, we actually conveyed this property to the Cuyahoga County Land Reutilization Corporation for redevelopment with the understanding that the home will be sold under their veterans program. Today, the Cuyahoga County Land Re Reutilization Corporation has begun the redevelopment of this property. If you have not noticed, the roof is torn down and is being rebuilt. And the planned development will be completed by mid-November. They have informed me that as of this writing, they have a Cuyahoga County veteran who is ready to purchase the property. So that property, which has been a nuisance for the last year and a half, will finally be redeveloped and resolved with new ownership. So I believe those residents over there will probably be really happy and it won't look like such a terrible eyesore. Over the summer, council approved three economic development projects and President, Council President Gallagher asked me to give you an update on these projects. Clean Life Energy LLC is a two-year young entrepreneurial company located on Brook Park Road. It has major ties to overseas partners. They develop, assemble, and distribute aftermarket LED lighting products. Brooklyn supported this company with a $25,000 grant to expand their development labs, bringing all that development work here from overseas, which retain five positions, and they now have immediately hired seven new employees, a combination of experience and Case Western Reserve graduates. And to their existing real estate footprint, 
they have leased an additional 4,000 square feet for their labs and light assembly product of the products. This bold move by Brooklyn to put finances into this particular company sets the platform for moving most of their product development, some assembly operations here to Brooklyn. So thank you, Brooklyn, for believing in this company because you're going to read a lot about clean life energy. The next, pro the next project that the council approved was Senvio. Senvio purchased the assets and operations of a competitor two years ago. They evaluated consolidation plans with the two companies. Brooklyn supported the Brooklyn operation with a $35,000 grant, which will retain 150 jobs and create 12 new jobs in Brooklyn. This was a good move on Brooklyn's part because we helped them offset the cost of electrical infrastructure but that was over $100,000 to support the new machinery and equipment coming from the acquired company, which could have gone anywhere in the United States. They purchased a new transformer. The transformer was well over the 50K mark. And they also had numerous opportunities in US wide to invest. And they chose Brooklyn. This company has been in Brooklyn for what I understand almost 47 years, so we certainly didn't want to lose them. Lumen Park Trinity Holdings. Brooklyn approved a community reinvestment area application for this new senior assisted living center to be located on Idlewood Drive at the end of North Cliff. I know this has been a long project in the making, and I know you all have waited for this one for a long time. But I have shepherded this project for a long time also since I came here to Brooklyn. <coughs> they have their funding, they're ready to go. Trinity Land Holdings is planning for 30 skilled beds and 55 assisted with rehab facility. They have received a fully execu they have received approval from their fully executed application for the transfer of 30 bed licenses and are in the 30-day waiting period. Bed licenses go through an appeals process. It's a 30-day appeals process. If no one appeals these licenses for Trinity Land Holdings, they should have word by October 10th to move forward. And the plan to move forward will be the entire development project. As Council President Gallagher mentioned, it is a $21 million project that will be at the end of Northcliffe. This is a great project for Brooklyn, and I have worked with the ownership for years to try and get this thing moving, and I think we finally got it to its almost completion. This summer, the American Greetings Campus was sold to Cleveland American LLC Development Organization. The administration had the opportunity to meet and greet the new ownership who shared with them the vision for the park. We are working with them in the initial stages of developing a design for the park, which will include new infrastructure and facilities to support the market. AG does intend to leave a portion of their operation in the park. So AG is not completely vacating the park. I look for a very diverse business campus coming to the 100 acres at the AG facility today. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Fran. Mm -hmm. We will now move on to requests. First, we have a request to adver advertise for bids for the ADA ramp at City Hall. Move to table. Second. Second. To table, Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Andy Selhertz? Yes. Katie Gallagher? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Move on to legislation. Uh, we first have resolution 2014-5, accepting the amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission and authorizing the necessary tax levies and certifying them to the county fiscal office. This is on second reading. 
Next, we have Resolution 2014-6, accepting the improvement target areas as designated by the county and approving the application for upgrading the image of Brooklyn through lighting to be funded under the Community Development Block Grant Program. Move like to, to oh, okay. go ahead, Ms. Pudi. Move to amend the title um, to upgrading the image and safety, so we'll insert the word safety of Brooklyn through lighting Second. As well as, did you want to add something in the application? Yes, that would be for the application and the title of the ordinance. We have a second. second. Yes. And this is to amend? Yes. To amend, Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Andy Selhurst? Yes. Katie Gallagher? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Introduced by all, suspend the rules as amended. Second. To suspend the rules, Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Andy Selhurst? Yes. Katie Gallagher? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. To adopt as amended, Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Andy Selhurst? Yes. Katie Gallagher? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Next, we have Ordinance 2014-49, authorizing the purchase of a 2014 Ford E350 passenger bus for use by the Senior Center from Valley Ford Truck in the amount of $58,758.50 and utilizing a Parma Hospital Health Care Foundation grant in the amount of $50,000. Need a motion, please? Move to adopt. Second. To adopt, Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Kathy Pucci? I'm going to abstain for um, the reasons I previously stated, and I just want to reiterate again, I'm not against replacing the senior van. I recognize its importance. I just disagree with how we're choosing to pay for it. Mary Belvier? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Andy Selhurst? Yes. Katie Gallagher? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ordinance 2014-51, authorizing the mayor to enter into contract with Je Jackson, Deacon, and Associates for the purpose of providing property and casualty insurance for the City of Brooklyn for the period of September 25, 2014 to September 25, 2015 for a total cost of $179,901. And this is on second reading. Ordinance 2014-52, establishing the full-time position of Parks and Recreation Commissioner and repealing the position of Recreation Commissioner. This is on second reading. Ordinance 2014-53, authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with the International Association of Firefighters Local 1145. A motion, please. May I be recognized? Yes. Um, Mr. Clausen, do you think we should amend it since this already went a first reading per your exhibit? Um, I think uh, we passed it first without amending it, correct? Correct. Yeah, you might as well amend it. Okay, I'll make a motion then that we amend this ordinance per the exhibits supplied by Mr. Clausen. Second. To amend, Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Andy Salhertz? Yes. Katie Gallagher? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Introduced by all, suspend the rules as amended. Second. To suspend the rules, Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Andy Selhurst? Yes. Katie Gallagher? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. To adopt as amended, Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Andy Selhurst? Yes. Katie Gallagher? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Next, we have Ordinance 2014-54, amending the annual appropriations. This is on first reading. Ordinance 2014-55, authorizing interfund transfers and advances during 2014. This is on first reading. Ordinance 2014-56, amending Ordinance 2014-38, which authorized the mayor to enter into a municipal agency agreement with Cuyahoga County Re Land Reutilization Corporation for the demolition of Brooklyn-owned property to include not only 7508 Memphis Avenue, but other properties owned by the City of Brooklyn. I need a motion, please. Introduced by, I'll suspend the rules. Second. Sir. To suspend the rules, Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Andy Selhurst? Yes. Katie Gallagher? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. To adopt, Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Andy Selhurst? Yes. Katie Gallagher? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. 
And lastly, we have Ordinance 2014-57, authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Bram Hall Engineering and Surveying Company, Incorporated, for the sole purpose of engineering services for Tiedemann Road, PID number 95548, for a total cost of $93,300. And this is on first reading. Does anyone on council or any directors have anything further to say? for? Motion to adjourn. I, I just have one brief thing. I would just like to congratulate Linda Kelber and Marie Torino on their retirements and thank them for their years of service to our community. Motion to adjourn. Second. To adjourn. Ron Van Kirk. Yes. Kathy Pucci. Yes. Mary Belvere. Yes. Kevin Tiansky. Yes. Andy Selhurst. Yes. Katie Gallagher. Yes. Tony DeMarco. Yes. I just want to sign these.